This viscast is about simple harmonic motion. Please pause the video and read carefully through the question. A good starting point for this question is to try and imagine what we're dealing with. We've got two springs which are attached to a block on a frictionless floor and we're told that one spring is attached on the left and one spring is attached on the right. So our diagram should look something like this. We're told some information about the system. Firstly, if the spring on the left is removed so that my mass only has the spring on the right attached to it, then my object will oscillate with a frequency of 30 hertz. We're also told that if the spring on the right is removed, and instead we've only got the spring on the left attached, then my mass can oscillate at a frequency of 45 hertz. That tells me that the, the spring constant on the left is a bit stiffer than the spring constant on the right because it oscillates faster. Remembering from simple harmonic motion, if I interpret simple harmonic motion, then my angular frequency, which is 2 pi times my frequency, is going to be the square root of k over m. So with one spring attached, the larger k is, the faster the oscillation frequency. So I can say here that k1 must be greater than k2. The question's asking me, what frequency will my block oscillate at if both springs are attached? To develop my problem, we've drawn these diagrams here. And the strategy that I'm going to take is I'm going to try and evaluate what k1 and k2 are. Because if I've got values for k1 and k2, I can then use the other bit of information I know is that when springs are attached like this, when one spring is attached to the left and one spring is attached to the right, if I displace my mass from the equilibrium position, so if I move my mass over to the left, for instance, then the spring on the right pushes and the spring on the left pulls. They both, both springs have a restoring force acting in the same direction, so this is like having springs acting in parallel. And when springs acting in parallel, then the effective spring constant is just the sum of the spring constants k1 plus k2 as we've seen that in a previous FizzCast. So let's go through and do the evaluation stage. I want to try and find out what K1 and K2 are. So I'll use my expression up here. So 2 pi times the frequency when the spring on the left is removed is equal to 2 pi times 30 hertz. And then from my equation for simple harmonic motion, that must be equal to k2 divided by m. Now I'm not given the mass in my problem. If I had the mass, I'd get a numerical value for k2. However, I'm going to leave the mass in as an unknown quantity for the moment, but I think I shall see that that won't matter. It will, masses will cancel later on when it comes to evaluating the frequency, so I don't necessarily have to know that. Let's rearrange this to get k2 by itself, so I need to take the square of both sides pi times 30 all squared and then I can multiply by the mass to get k2. I can now look at the oscillating frequency if I remove the right hand spring is 2 pi times 45 hertz that has to be equal to the square root of k1 over m it's this scenario here rearranging that I get k1 is now equal to 2 pi times 45 all squared also multiplied by the mass. And so what I'm after is the frequency of oscillation for when I've got two springs. So the frequency of oscillation when I've got two springs, omega is equal to 2 pi times f. That's now given by the square root of the effective spring constant with two springs attached in parallel is k1 plus k2 divided by m. I can evaluate that by substituting in for k1 and k2. So I've got 2 pi times 45 all squared times the mass for k1 plus 2 pi times 30 
all squared times the mass for K2, all divided by the mass. So we can see that the mass cancels top and bottom, so we didn't need a numerical value for that. Equal to 2 pi times the frequency. And now if I look here, I've got 2 pi squared common to both of these terms. So I can actually factorize out 2 pi squared, and that outside the square root just gives me 2 pi. And I'm left inside the square root with 45 squared plus 30 squared. That allows me to evaluate my frequency of oscillation. It's the square root of 45 squared plus 30 squared. And if I put that in my calculator, I get 54 hertz. That's my frequency of oscillation. If we do a little bit of assessment, because I've got two springs attached, two springs acting in parallel, remember it doesn't matter whether the springs are attached either side of my mass or whether I have two springs attached on one side. This is still the situation of springs acting in parallel. If I was to displace my mass from the equilibrium position, both springs, importantly, have a restoring force which acts in the same direction. That restoring force is larger, hence my effective spring constant is larger, and hence I oscillate at a higher frequency.